thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. And we're here to talk about Temple Rome next summer. And uh, we've got a blue ribbon panel of speakers here for you. Um, and I'd like to especially invite our dean of Temple Rome, Amelia Zampina. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> and we have uh, professors Bonnie Tavares and Professor Salomera, who will be teaching uh, next summer. And Professor Susan DeJarnet, who taught and directed the program last summer. So we've got plenty of uh, a lot of information for you. I'd also like to introduce you to my colleague, Felicity L. Baker, uh, who's the office manager for our Office of Graduate and International Programs. So thank you all for coming. And it's great to see you. And let's talk about Rome and why. Why go to Rome next summer? And the reason why is we think it's good for your own personal and professional development as lawyers, legal professionals. So, but for practical reasons also, the US job market is rapidly internationalized. And put together, the United States and the EU form one of the largest GDP blocks. So there's going to be a lot of job opportunities in this space. And even if you don't necessarily have an international abroad interest, a lot of domestic and local employers really value international. I get calls all the time from local employers asking for talent that speaks another language, has study abroad experience, can work with international clients, can work with a diverse team of people with a number of worldviews. And study abroad is only going to better equip you to work in those environments and make you more attractive to those employers. Uh, and at Rome, we help to equip you to capture those opportunities. And so it will help you to globalize your perspective for a changing job market. And this job market is going to continue to change throughout your legal careers. I look at my own career 20 years ago, which already had important international pieces to it. And now looking at it today, it's even more international. And that is only going to continue, especially in the United States as a country, as we continue to have more and more diversity and more and more international interests. Another value of working, of attending Temple Rome is it's going to help you to achieve competence in international law in a way that you won't necessarily acquire here because you'll be studying U.S. and international law in another country uh, and you'll be able to explore and interact with the law in ways that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do here. Uh, and it will also allow you to create a transnational network. A number of the students at Temple Rome are not Temple students, so you'll be able to meet students from other law schools. Uh, we will be providing a range of networking opportunities. Uh, Temple Rome is very well connected in Rome, and we work in partner with a number of law firms, and we'll have an event where you'll get to meet a number of lawyers in Rome as part of the program. And we also offer internship opportunities. We have uh, a director in Temple Rome who does work with our internship partners. And for anyone who has an interest in almost any area of law, we will have a partner for you in Rome, be it commercial law, family law, international law. Uh, we just have a range of partners who are also very happy to provide internship opportunities for you if you're willing to stay in Rome. So last summer, 40% of the students were from other US law schools. And so, and uh, Professor Desarnet will be able to comment as well that it was really a special bond. I think the students just connected in many ways and they really value being able to meet even a broader number of students from outside of Temple. And we also opened the program to international lawyers. In the past, we have had Italian lawyers attend the program. Uh, we are working to try to uh, recruit Italian lawyers to attend next summer as well. So we're hoping to have both an interesting and broad domestic class, but also some contact with Italian lawyers as well in the program. So I know one of the first questions that students have is how and where they want to stay, because Temple Rome does not have a dormitory. And so uh, our students in the past have always gone to Airbnb or to unit places, and they've been very successful at finding places to stay. Um, and Professor DeJarnet is expert in where in Rome to go, where in Rome to look, um, you know, and so uh, it has all sorts of great suggestions uh, on where to go. But based on what we have seen summer after summer after summer, um, Airbnb has been probably the most uh, most popular. But we also can give other recommendations based on your needs uh, and your and your interests and, of course, what part of town uh, to, to be in. Uh, so next summer, 
Uh, we're going to be teaching three courses. Uh, so Professor Tavares will be teaching uh, comparative employment law. And then uh, Professor Mara will be teaching intro to EU law. And then we also have another course called Global Legal Perspectives uh, on uh, uh, that will be part of the program as well, where we have a series of uh, local faculty who will come and talk to you about their areas of practice, some of whom are practicing lawyers, others of whom are law professors in Italy. So by the end of that course, you're really going to get a good perspective about how the law is practiced and understood and learned in another culture. So before we go on, I'm going to actually invite Professor Tavares to come up, to uh, who will be the director of next summer's program, to talk a lot about her course. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Professor Tavares, and I first want to just encourage you to go to Rome. Uh, when Before I went the, for the first time in 2012, one of my colleagues who was also a Temple student had gone to the Temple program in Rome when she was a student. And here we were years later, and she said, I think about it every single day. And she enjoyed it that much. And I was thinking to myself then, yeah. it's like, yeah, sure, right. You know, as a uh, cynical adult, it's like, it can't be that great, right? And I remember about um, three days in, walking to work with the Tiber River on my right and with these beautiful villas on the left and thinking, I love this. Mm -hmm. I love it. It was fantastic. My best professional experience to date. But about the course that I'm going to be teaching, it's comparative employment law, the right to privacy and employment. And we will be discussing all different types of topics and issues about how employers get all up in your business. So it'll be things like drug testing and physical testing, psychological testing, um, employer interrogations and searches, um, employee appearance regulation, employer inquiries into offsite conduct, different things like that. It will be a two credit serial writing course. Uh, the writings will be mostly short reflection pieces. You won't have to worry about a textbook. Um, all the readings will be provided either on Canvas or you'll be able to download them West, from Westlaw or Lexis. And um, did I have everything? Oh, we will be comparing United States law and primarily the law of the European Union, but we'll sprinkle in other countries when the comparisons and contrasts are particularly interesting. So it should be a very interesting and fun to, to discuss. I'm looking forward, hope to see you all there. Hi everyone, hi everyone out there um, in cyberspace. My name is Solo Mera. I'm a full-time member of the Temple faculty where I have been since the year 2000 and I'll teach Introduction to European law. Obviously, Rome is a great place. I second a lot of the endorsements. Historic, beautiful city. It's also a great place to have an introduction to European Union law. I, I've taught this course before. Um, I can give you a sort of an overview of why it's important and the kind of things we cover. It's important because essentially the European Union has more population and a bigger GDP than the United States. It's an intentional product of uh, international agreement between the member states after the Second World War. Um, Rome is a great place to study it. You know, the Treaty of Rome, that was sort of a kickoff moment for the European Union. Um, really, we, we learn about it, the law of the European Union in kind of three parts. The first, for those, because I, I don't presume people have any actual knowledge of EU law in this course. First, we start thinking about and learning about the institutions, right? And those of you, you know, you're all American law students, you know, Article One, Congress, Article Two, the President, Article Three, the Judiciary. There are counterparts in the European Union, right? There's, you know, there's the European Parliament, the European Commission, and then uh, uh, several trans Europe uh, courts, right? Um, and we learn about how the different roles they play. They're not exactly analogous to our system, and we'll learn more about them, deeper into what these different courts are, what the different agencies in the Commission are, and what they do. Second thing, um, we'll focus on some of the sort of bedrock freedoms um, and rights that the, the uh, agreements create, right? That create the European Union, um, starting off with you know, freedoms of movement for uh, labor, capital, goods, service, which are pretty critical in creating the, the common market. 
um, as well as some other areas. Finally, we'll wrap up by looking at um, something that's called the Brussels effect, which is a tendency for on a kind of um, race to the top or almost like a sort of progressive tendency for Brussels to set a, um, a kind of agenda on a variety of areas, um, most notably lately, things like the Digital Markets Act, um, areas of, of like GDPR and, and individual privacy. Um, and I think this is a really interesting thing to sort of end with, especially as we return to our own um, legal system and we continue studying law in our own law schools to think about how these dynamics work. So thank you very much. I, I hope you will consider taking the course. And, um, and I, 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 that's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we also have a course called Global Legal Perspectives, uh, where we bring in uh, faculty from throughout Rome who will uh, give you talks on their work. And for that, I'm going to invite Professor Dejarnik, who taught the course last summer, uh, to give uh, both her perspective of how the program went, uh, as well as uh, as well as this course. Perspectives is sort of the add-on fun stuff, I would say. Um, and it's different every summer. So what um, Professor Tavares comes up with this summer may be different, but there will be some things in common, I'm sure. The goal is to help you get a taste of a lot of other things that can't be covered in those two basic courses. And it includes field trips, including the two that I think you will undoubtedly do again. One to the, um, and I'm going to mispronounce it, Parthenope Law School in Naples, which is in a beautiful location right on the Bay of Naples. And it's really fun to visit another law school, hear from their faculty and speakers. Um, the other field trip I'm I'm always committed to, and I'm, I'm going to try and push that it, this happens again, is a trip to the Fosse Argentine, which is a World War II monument to a massacre committed by the Nazis against um, not just Jews, but various people living in Rome. Um, and it's a very moving exhibit, but it, uh, it's the site of where 333 people were murdered by the Nazis in retaliation for a partisan attack. Um, and there's a plaque for each one of them saying their name, their age, their religion, and their occupation. And it really gives you a flavor of the cross-section of people who were who were killed there. And, and that's the most modern thing I think we probably did. So much of the rest is focused on the more ancient parts of Rome. Um, the other piece of global perspectives, legal perspective, which I think has been really fun every time I've been to Rome is you do a project. You do a group project with a couple other people on some aspect of the law in Rome or Italy and you do a presentation on it. Um, and they have ranged from some of my favorite, my favorite one last year was one of the students from Albany actually was a, a rugby player and he sought out a rugby team to practice with. Turns out there is a team called the All Reds, um, which not only is a rugby team, but they're pretty much anarchists also. They've taken over an old Greyhound racing track and they have their rugby matches there, but they also have food programs and classes for kids. And they've been essentially squatting in it, I think for a couple of years, I don't know how much you, um, so that's what they did their project on was like, how can this um, thing exist um, when it isn't completely legal? Um, a couple of years ago, somebody, a group did uh, wine regulation um, because wine is an extremely important commodity in Italy, heavily regulated, and there's different standards. And they had they explained all of them, and they had samples, which was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my other favorite from a few years back is a study. You will see how many people have ever been to Rome before, ever. There's a lot of feral cats that live yeah. in some of the major, like the Forum and... Um, a place called Largo, Argentina, which is a site that hasn't really been fully excavated, but was the site of Julius Caesar's assassination. There's these cat colonies that live there. There is a person whose job it is to take care of the cats. So someone actually looked up the regulations on that and how that person is fired, what they do. That was 
pretty fascinating. So people come up with great topics every year, and it's really a great part of the program to hear their short, their short presentations, like five to ten minutes, but they're great. So that's a flavor of global legal perspectives. Thanks. And then could you just give some perspective of how the program went last summer? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, it was great. On behalf of the students. I think. <laughs> um, it's pretty intense. Um, one thing you want to be prepared for is you really are in school, right? You have two classes every day and then some days an additional class. But that schedule still gives you lots of time to be in Rome, to experience the city, to see things. We built in one free day after the Naples trip. So many people, we went to Naples together and then many, and then the next day um, we had no classes. So many students took advantage of that long weekend to go. Uh, we tried to encourage people to stay in Italy last summer because of COVID stuff. That may not be happening this summer. Who knows? Would we will hope it's not, but believe me, there's plenty of places in Italy to go see. So people went to Sicily, they went to the Atlantic Coast, they went all over. So it's fair to say that the classwork is going to be very rich and vigorous and, and rigorous, but not so much so that you're not going to be able to get out and enjoy it. Yes. So I think we, we've struck perfect balance uh, you know, through the through the program. So um, internships, you know, we know many students uh, have interest in doing internships. Uh, because the program is short, it's four weeks, you still have plenty of time to come back to the United States and do an eight to mm -hmm. ten week internship here if you choose to, or if you choose to be in Rome. These are just some examples of the partners that we work with. And so, again, all areas of law, and we'd be happy to introduce you to any of our partners if you'd like to explore some sort of internship in Rome after. We have a lot of support at Temple Rome. And there's, again, as Professor DeJarnett mentioned, it's a well-oiled machine. There's student support services. There's a full-time staff. Uh, I'm going to be there for the first week, but uh, I'm also a resource for you here in Philadelphia. Um, Johnny Maranjo is, uh, is the, works very closely with the students at Temple Rome. And if you should get sick, Temple does provide health insurance to all students, regardless of whether they are Temple students or not, uh, studying from the United States to have medical care. So we currently work with International SOS, and the protocol is if you get sick, you call International SOS, they put you in contact with a medical professional, and then that person will recommend either self-care or will help you find a local doctor who speaks English, who will help you with uh, whatever, you know, whatever matter it is. And then by the time you arrive at that location, the insurance pre-certification has arrived. And so it's very, very seamless. In fact, I made it a point to get sick in Rome. And, uh, and I went through this process and it worked perfectly. <laughs> and, um, so I can, I can vouch for it myself having gone through this whole thing myself. So we have a lot of, a lot of support while you're there. And so of course, Rome is a city we all know about and it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. They do say that 75% of all fine art in the world is in Italy. And so that's a United Nations study. And so that brings us to Temple Rome. And I'm just delighted that we're able to welcome here to our law school, uh, the Dean of Temple Rome, and also Temple University's uh, Vice Provost for uh, Global Engagement, uh, who will tell us about Temple Rome and what's happening there. So Amelia, thanks for joining us and please. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Jim. Grazie per venire. Grazie, grazie. Uh, so we renovated the building. We need to give oh, you a, a new, new picture. picture. Right. Yeah, I need a new so picture. Hello everyone, my name is Emilia Zankina and I joined uh, Temple uh, um, in March of 2020 uh, as the Dean of Temple Rome, so I can tell you that it's only been getting better. <laughs> in June, when I was finally able to enter the country, there was no one there. So we started with, um, uh, we started with, uh, just online courses, and we were, I'm very proud that there are about 150 American programs in Italy. And Temple is one of the 10 biggest ones and uh, um, among the five oldest ones. Uh, we were formed there in 1966, we started operations. So in January of 2021, we welcomed the cohort of students and we were one out of six American programs to operate in person. And I just learned that Bonnie's daughter was with us <laughs> that semester. So um, speaking of COVID, we've done it all. You know, this first semester, students needed to be 
in quarantine for two weeks. Uh, so we needed to do orientation online to give them activities. So, so John actually did a tea ceremony and, and, and class for them. We did yoga online. We got them through. And uh, compared to, uh, to this current semester, it's a walk in the park. Yes, we do get uh, now and then a positive case. Um, we had one thus far this uh, semester, one student, the current uh, regulation in Italy is a five-day quarantine, but you do need a negative test to uh, get out of the quarantine. So this is why some of the people stayed for seven days, because uh, even though five is the minimum, you do need that negative test. But we have, and, and thank you for saying it's a well oiled machine, for sure. Uh, we have 15 people total there. The entire campus, uh, but everybody is a jack of all trades and, and, and does does it all. And so we have an amazing student uh, life support team. Uh, any any issues uh, that, that that you may have, we're there to help you. We have counseling services. Uh, we have also academic support, which in your case, you know, as law students, it's, it's probably not that much use. But again, we have librarians who could help you. We have. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, doctors, we have, uh, in addition to insurance, we also have our doctor uh, that, uh, that could uh, uh, make things move and, and make sure you have everything that you need. And you, you will be there with our undergraduate students. We may have about 200 undergrads this, uh, this summer. We had over 200 last summer. Um, so we also have uh, uh, fun activities that you could sign up for. We have wine test tasting. We have calcetto. Uh, it is it is a very lively lively campus. Uh, you see this building. Uh, it belongs to the Caproni family. Johnny Caproni was um, an, uh, an a renetical uh, engineer constructing planes. Uh, so you would see when you get there that some of this uh, some of this. Uh, uh, windows, they have airplanes on them. Uh, so, so the building is, is, is a typical uh, Roman old building of a noble family that was converted to a campus. And it has this large lobby where students hang out. It has a gallery. So we have about 10 gallery shows oh. a year. So when you get there, uh, there will be certain to be some gallery show happening and going on. And uh, uh, for, for many of the classrooms, uh, just as you said, these ex excursions, Rome is truly the classroom. We're right in the center of the city by Piazza del Popolo. Uh, so Piazza di Spagna is a 15 minute walk, uh, 30 minutes walk to, to the Vatican Museums. And uh, if you need to brush on your Latin, you just need to walk down via Ripetta and by the Augustus and Hare Pachis and, and practice your Latin. It's very easy to feel ignorant in Rome <laughs> because everywhere you go, there is some history, whether it's Julius Caesar's or whether it's the, the, the Colonna di Traiano, there is something, there is some history. And it is virtually impossible, except for a few of our art history professors, <laughs> to know everything about every stone and every rock that is there. Uh, other than that, Rome, is, Rome is, a, is a lovely, lovely city. It's very safe. Uh, we, we, of course, you do have pickpocketers uh, here and there when you have large uh, uh, crowds of tourists, but you don't have, you don't have violent crimes uh, in Rome. This is something very, very rare. Uh, so it's a very uh, safe city where late into the night, people are walking, uh, people are sitting outside, the restaurants and their ca cafes, it's a very much walking and outside culture. The most dangerous thing in Rome is probably the electric scooters. <laughs> Uh, you know those L-shaped one with the little wheels on the uh, on the cobblestones. They're not a good thing. We had some students uh, break a jaw, you know, falling from that. So, so if you're there and you're wondering what to rent, don't rent the L-shaped one. They have regular scooters that you could rent, and it's just an app away or electric bikes. So you do see a lot of electric uh, electric uh, mobile devices, so to say. So, uh, around the city. Uh, also, it is a city where Motorino is, is the best uh, place, uh, way to go around. Uh, if you're local, I, I just got one and already wow. fell. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, yes, um, it is, um, it is a, a city where you could go from a fancy restaurant with a beautiful view 
to a, a place outside, you know, a truck with a beautiful view. <laughs> so what, what you get guaranteed is certainly the beautiful view. It's also a very dynamic city. Uh, many Americans uh, tend to think of Italy as the place of the Roman Empire and just a place to go look at art. It's a very modern city. It's a very diverse city. There's a lot of populations from Africa, from Syria, uh, from Northern Africa, from Eastern Europe, lots of Ukrainians these days. You have lots of Romanians, lots of Polish. I'm a native of Bulgaria via Pittsburgh now living in Italy. So, so it, it's, it's a really rich, uh, rich uh, and very colorful uh, place. And, and tourists are back. Uh, oh, they're back. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're back, which of course is great for the city uh, and for the economy. Uh, so you would see a lot of American tourists. You would see a lot of European tourists. Chinese tourists, because of still the existing restrictions, not, not back in high numbers uh, still. Uh, but again, a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience overall that would enrich you culturally, it would enrich you emotionally, it would uh, give you a different kind of maturity, these cultural competencies that John was talking about. There is nothing like being immersed, not just traveling through a city, but being somewhere for a four weeks where you could really start getting some relationship with the place. And you start noticing the different cultures, start uh, start understanding the different way people think and act, and, and, and you become part of that. It's a very, very enriching experience that has the fermenting effect, just like wine. You leave Rome, and that continues to work inside of you. So that's why years later, you still <laughs> say, oh, this was so impactful. So I'm here for any questions, and, and you can also uh, or shoot me an email anytime with any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie mille. <laughs> and, and he speaks excellent Italian, in addition to Chinese and some Russian. That's and what else? <laughs> so, so <laughs> I try. So well, thank you so much for that over that overview. And I think uh, we can all see that you know, Temple Rome is just a very very special place in a special location. And yes, the diversity of the city is also valuable. In fact, I lived in China for 10 years, uh, and one of the best Chinese restaurants I have found is in Rome. Oh, really? It is, yeah. And the owner will give a discount, 10% discount to anyone affiliated with Temple Rome. You have to tell yeah, me where it is. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fiance, my mother. <laughs> yeah. So our campus, is, as, as the dean just described, has is it's a full campus with all the resources and a library and uh, and, and the student services that we would have here on main campus. Uh, the Piazza di Spagna is a very, very short walking distance from Temple Rome. Uh, and students sometimes live right there and will walk right by it uh, each and every day, sometimes more than once. The food we don't have to talk about. I think we all know that Italian food is considered to be, you know, one of the most amazing cuisines in the world. And we'll be exploring that, uh, you know, on a regular basis while, while there. Um, there's cafes all over on every street corner, and it's not uncommon for students to be doing their homework at one of the cafes on one of the piazzas. Um, in fact, I bumped into a few students doing that more than once. And so it's just something very inspiring about just being in that setting and, uh, and studying or, or just, you know, just getting to know Rome in that way. Um, students will sometimes, you know, just do their own cooking. There's mm -hmm. not like massive supermarkets like we're accustomed to here, although there are supermarkets. Uh, but, you know, there's plenty of these smaller markets where students just, you know, bought the local food and did a lot of their own cooking and uh, have found that the prices are actually quite reasonable uh, with respect to the food and buying things. I found things to be very, very reasonably priced compared to what I paid here for, for similar items. Uh, there's probably no need to talk about the gelato. Um, there's many different opinions about which are the best gelato places in Rome. And so when you and the, each of the Temple Rome staff will have their recommendations as to where to go for gelato. Um, I have one as well. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, but there's plenty of life within walking distance. And uh, that's just part of the culture of being there. The history is everywhere, as Professor DeJarna mentioned, and you know, you will be part of that each and every day, just seeing the Colosseum or seeing the Forum, uh, seeing things in Latin, you know, which is kind of important for lawyers uh, to, to have that exposure is, uh, is, all, uh, is all part of the experience. Students were going away all over on weekend trips, some within Italy, some without. Travel within Italy and within Europe uh, over the summer is actually quite reasonable. A lot of students found the prices and the hotels to actually be very, very affordable. 
And so, or they just stayed right in Rome, depending on what their, their interests were. So, uh, and of course, we all will have recommendations on where to go and what to do uh, when there. Two trips that we are planning um, is, uh, one is to uh, a, a lakeside town called Trevignano. That'll be on the second day of the trip where we're all just gonna get on a bus and go there, walk around the small town and we'll have a traditional Italian lunch prepared for you. And uh, it's just a way to get to know each other as the program begins and just kind of get that authentic feel. Um, and then as Professor DeJona mentioned, we are working to try to get and arrange the trips to uh, to Pulsi. Uh, so uh, we will be having trips during Rome. So it's not just in the classroom and seeing speakers, but we will be getting out and having some experiences within Rome. And of course, we take you to Naples. This is an innovation we had last year uh, with our partner school, University of Naples, Parthenope, which is located right on the Bay of Naples. And so you'll be actually sitting in that classroom and looking out over the bay, and you'll be able to see Capri, hopefully staying focused on the classwork, perhaps going to Capri, you know, later that night. So, um, you know, that's one thing that we'll do as part of the trip to get you out of the uh, uh, of, uh, of Rome, but also to be able to meet legal professionals and professors in Naples as well, which of course is one of Italy's other top tourist destinations. And of course, many Italian Americans and you know trace their roots to that particular region of Italy. Um, one thing that's unusual about Temple Law School, as I think we all know by now, is we're the only American law school to have a T education program, and uh, and. Uh, as part of that tea education program, when we're in Rome, I will take you to Namaste, which is the largest tea store in Rome. The owner is a friend of mine and a friend of a professor of Temple Rome. That's how we met. And we will actually go there and we'll do the whole tea ceremony. And uh, students from last summer just remarked it was a pretty outstanding experience. And so, uh, and the owner of that store is Italy's most famous and well-recognized tea sommelier. So you can ask all sorts of questions and she will brew teas that are popular in Italy. And so even though Italy is a coffee culture, she makes the argument that that's changing and she will be able to explain how to connect with Italians with tea and through the kinds of teas that are popular in Italy. I will say that one of the things she brewed for us was a black green blend that was flavored with her own mint and anise and licorice and she cold brewed it. And it was one of the most amazing infusions I've tried. I bought plenty uh, to, to brew here too. So uh, that's just one of the things and it's right behind the Pantheon. So we just sat there and right by the Pantheon, enjoy tea. And um, that's one of the things we'll include on the trip as well, optionally. Uh, so uh, I know students are concerned about cost. We do everything we can to keep the cost reasonable. Uh, so the tuition has been 4,000 for many, many years. Uh, and these are some of the other fees that are involved. So depending on whether you have a roommate or whether you have your own place, depending on when you travel, how you travel, that's the approximate budget uh, for what we have seen and uh, for what you can expect for the four weeks while you're in Rome and for financial aid questions for Temple students, um, uh, Rahia will be able to answer those for you because everyone has a different package that may need to, uh, where she can explain in greater detail what may or may not apply to Rome. So that's the approximate uh, the budget. Um, of course, we are familiar with COVID and COVID is still real. So we do have a very friendly cancellation policy. So, uh, so we will be, uh, you know, revising that as we get closer to the date. But we do know that students are concerned about COVID, and you know, we if anyone cannot go because of COVID, uh, there will be a very, very friendly refund policy. Uh, so we do have a student who uh, who who spoke about the program. Uh, Hi, my name is John Shahar, and. I'm a 2021 grad of Temple University, and I wanted to take a second to tell you that you have to go and spend a summer at Temple Rome. I went during my 1L year, and I couldn't recommend it enough. The coursework is super manageable and interesting. The people on the program are wonderful. You have a chance to live in a city with such rich history, amazing art and architecture, and even better food. Being in Rome, you also get a chance to travel around and see more of this big and beautiful world. There's a trip or two during the program to Todi or maybe Naples. And on weekends, you can go and stay anywhere, super easy. I got to go to Switzerland, to Germany, to Greece, to Spain. It was truly remarkable. Um, and if you're worried about internships or jobs or things like that, it couldn't be easier. 
absolutely everybody on my program had something lined up for themselves, either in Italy or once we got back. At the end of the day, the Temple Rome program is truly amazing. And I would recommend to absolutely everybody to go. I've always been very grateful for John to volunteer for doing that since uh, he just said how Rome was transformational to him. So, uh, so I think he said it much better than I could. So of course we have other student testimonials who have said how Tem Temple Rome helped them to differentiate themselves when they were looking for jobs. The appreciation and understanding of EU law has been very valuable. Um, and at least going to interviews, a lot of people you'll interview with have some sort of cultural interest in Rome. And I've discovered this. Um, you know, I lived, you know, I directed Temple's program in China for 10 years. And when I meet local lawyers, they'll be like, wow, that's really cool. But then when I say, but I was just in Rome last summer. <laughs> and it was like, I feel like I just came off the Acropolis as if this is a really important thing. So there's just a lot of value, I think, in the, in the community, especially in the legal community and just interesting cultural ties to Rome. And so uh, that I think will help to reduce distance and be an icebreaker, both for interviews and also in jobs. But of course, there's also the substantive value as well that will help you in your own international growth. The application deadline is April 15th for next summer. Uh, so we do encourage you to begin your applications now, uh, but uh, that's when the, the deadline is. And uh, you know we have a rolling admissions uh, policy. So uh, usually once your application is complete, we'll make a decision within a week. Uh, so, and that concludes the presentation. That's my email address. Uh, so of course, please feel free to contact me with any questions. I'm also, you know, my office, I'm in Klein 712. I'm always happy to meet with you personally. And once again, I'd like to thank our faculty for joining us today and, you know, my colleagues. And uh, now, you know, our time is yours. So if you have any questions, please ask. Yes. What does the uh, typical course schedule <clears throat> sorry, look like throughout the week? Is it like classes are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5? Or like, how is that kind of set up? Um, I'll tell you what we did last summer, which I assume will probably be similar. Classes started at 9.30 and ended... <laughs> The, the length of the class is dictated by having enough minutes to satisfy the ABA. So we had 80 minute classes. Um, when there was a perspectives lecture, then we'd take a short break and that would be from one, one to two. So the latest you were done is two o'clock, which left most people and on you know, two or three days of the week, you would be done at 1230. Um, that gives you plenty of time to do your reading and still get around. Now, sometimes it's, you know, if you're doing a trip to the Fosse or a trip to visit the wall farm, that might occupy the whole afternoon, but that's the general schedule. Okay. And Monday through Friday, yes, except for that one week, we scraped out a Friday off, but I assume you all will try to do that again this year. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Wow, we were that clear. <laughs> uh, I have a question, John. Oh yeah, go ahead, Ben. Uh, for the purposes of maybe being able to intern with one of the uh, Italian firms, uh, mm -hmm. is do they also do English or is like learning Italian pretty encouraged? No, English. Yeah, the, the, the internships are in English. Uh, internships are in English. Speak Italian, uh, that would also give you, you know, some advantage in some, in some cases. But all of the internships that we offer are, um, are, are in English, and you'll be working with attorneys who, who speak in English. Yes, okay. the, the level of English may vary. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, too, right. But uh, our partners are so excited because uh, you being there also helps them uh, to improve their English as well. So some have excellent English, of course, and some have uh, graduated abroad, uh, but yes, uh, uh, Yes, it is in English. We don't expect you to learn Italian in four weeks. It is not right. possible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for coming and uh, hope to see you next summer in Rome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.